Hello everyone, I'm Jae Hong Min. I will present about Jimbo, enabling multi-tenant strategy disaggregation on SmartNIC JBox. This is a joint work with the University of Washington, University of Wisconsin Medicine, VMware, and Samsung. Today, the growth of network bandwidth enables disaggregated infrastructure. Although any component can be disaggregated, storage and accelerator are the most common in the data center. The main benefit of the storage disaggregation is the resource utilization from the independent resource scanning. Thanks to the high-speed networks, the performance degradation is negligible. In addition, there are many innovations. SmartNIC, DPU, or SPDK are developed to accelerate the disaggregation and improve the performance. Let's talk about two innovations in more detail. The first one is NVMe Fabrics Protocol. NVM SSD improved the performance over traditional SATA or SCSI SSD. However, the PCI Express interface has a limitation on the scalability compared to the others, such as SAS. The NVMe of a fabric has introduced to overcome this challenge. It is an NVMe native protocol to access the high performance SSD over the network. The second one is SmartNIC. SmartNIC is very common in today's data center. Although the network acceleration is more popular, it can also implement cost-effective and power-efficient JBuff. We use Vorticom Stingray to build our disaggregated storage system. It has a power-efficient SOC with 8 ARM cores and PCI Express root complex to connect to NVMe SSD. It can run Linux on the ARM cores and support SPTK as well. Let's look at some numbers. We evaluate the performance and power consumption of SmartNIP. First, it shows a similar I/O performance to server-based JBuff. Specifically, it performs the same with the server-based JBuff for large I/O size. For small I/O sizes, it shows less than 5% performance degradation. In terms of power consumption, the ideal and the maximum power consumption were only 50% and 27% of server-based platform. However, there is a challenge in the development of storage system on SmartNIC. It has a small headroom for additional computation. We found that it is only 1 microsecond for a small I.O. and 5 microseconds for a large I.O. While the storage disaggregation benefits in terms of the resource utilization, it inevitably introduces multi-tenancy problems because multiple hosts or applications share the storage. And the lack of support to handle these problems in the current disaggregated storage system motivated us. In the following slides, we will discuss the challenges and our approaches. The performance of SSD in multi-tenancy is very unpredictable and unfair. Disaggregated storage suffers from a common fairness issue. Furthermore, the unique nature of SSD makes this even more difficult to solve. We categorize the challenge into three items. First, I/O fairness. Second, read and write asymmetry and I/O interference. And third, SSD condition and non-deterministic device performance. Let's take a look at these one by one. A fairness is always a big issue in multi-tenancy, and the SSD has no exceptions. A tenant with more outstanding IOs easily takes more bandwidth. For example, a tenant with 128 outstanding IOs gets three times higher bandwidth than one with only 32 outstanding IOs in our experiment. And unfortunately, the unique performance characteristics of SSD makes it even worse. Read and write asymmetry is most well-known issue in the SSD performance. NAND device not only has asymmetry read and write performance, but also does not support in-place update. SSD requires a unique erase program mechanism to handle this, and garbage collection is necessary. As a result, it increases the cost of write I.O. and degrades the performance. More importantly, the write I.O. dominates the bandwidth in the mixed pattern. In our experiment, the SSD performance dropped to 30% when read and write are mixed in the same ratio because of the slow write IOs. In addition, the read also shows high tail latency. Lastly, SSD shows very different performance according to the condition. Highly fragmented SSD due to the random write pattern performs significantly worse than the clean one because of frequent garbage collection and read fragmentation. Moreover, it is much more severe to the write performance than the read. In addition, 
it is also possible that performance curve is in the intermediate state. In multi-tenancy, various kinds of white pattern are mixed up, therefore, the SSD condition is difficult to predict and subject to change. As a result, the SSD performance is non-deterministic in the disaggregated storage system. We need a mechanism which adapts to both SSD condition and workload characteristics. Moreover, it should be lightweight because of the computing capability of SmartNI. To address the challenge, we take a black box approach and apply networking techniques. SSD is a small but complex network system. The internal structure of SSD consisting of a controller, NAND, and multiple channels resembles the network architecture. Instead of uh, modeling the SSD performance, we borrow the congestion control and packet scheduling mechanism from networking domain with SSD specific optimizations. We designed the software storage suite Jimbo, which has a pipeline architecture. Each pipeline consists of three major components, a hierarchical I.O. scheduler, delay-based congestion control, and write cost estimator. In addition, Jimbo provides the managed view of the SSD to each tenant. It includes a credit-based flow control and I.O. priority tagging. With the SSD virtual view, application can develop flexible mechanisms and policies. We will show this in our RockDB implementation of Jimbo and its variation. In Jimbo, each pipeline is dedicated to a specific SSD and shares nothing with others. With the I.O. performance of the SmartNIC, the pipeline on one ARM core is enough for full bandwidth of SSD. Three major components of Jimbo overcome the challenges we discussed in previous slides. First, Jimbo estimates the device performance capability using its delay-based congestion control mechanism. SSD internal parallelism is hidden to the user, and housekeeping operations such as garbage collection is unpredictable. Measuring the available bandwidth is important because these problems get even severe due to the I.O. interference and the SSD internal queuing mechanism if we overcome it I.O.s. However, there is no I.O. drops in storage device unless it has a critical error. Thus, we cannot use a packet drop based congestion control algorithm. With a dense experiment on the I.O. latency, we found that the latency has an impulse response to the congestion. It also varies according to the I.O. sizes. From these observations, we designed the delay-based congestion control which has a dynamic latency threshold as an SSD-specific optimization. A question for the delay-based congestion control is what is the threshold to determine the congestion state? In the SSD, a desirable threshold for different I.O. sizes are not the same. To be specific, a high threshold fails to detect the congestion of small I.O. promptly, and a low latency fails to fully utilize the device bandwidth. Instead of a static threshold, Jimbo uses a dynamic latency threshold. Jimbo updates the EWMA latency and the threshold on each I.O. completion. It increases the threshold if the I.O. latency exceeds the current threshold. On the other hand, it decays the threshold when the latency is under the threshold. The detailed equations are described in the slide. As a result, the latency threshold repeatedly approaches the I.O. latency and steps back as shown in the figure. Because read and write I.O. latency have different latency characteristics, Jimbo manages them separately. However, the generated signal is treated as the same. With the dynamic threshold, the signal generation rate represents the congestion level. Now, we have a congestion signal and can design a rate control mechanism. To avoid burst I.O. submission effectively, Jimbo uses the token bucket algorithm for the rate pacing instead of the congestion window. We define four congestion states according to the I.O. latency and the latency threshold. Congestion avoidance and congestion states are determined by the current latency threshold and I.O. latency. Jimbo increases or decreases the rate by I.O. size in these two states. Underutilized and overloaded states are the special cases, and we use two additional parameters, the minimum and the maximum threshold. When the I.O. latency is below the minimum threshold, Jimbo aggressively proved the desirable rate.
if the IR latency exceeds the maximum threshold, Gimbal immediately adjusts the rate to below the completion rate. With the delay-based congestion detection and the rate control, Gimbal finds the proper target rate for given workload and SAT condition. Second, Gimbal implements the fair I.O. scheduling mechanism. The mechanism not only considers the types and size of I.O., but also takes account into the I.O. processing time with an optimization called virtual slot. The I.O. scheduling has a two-level hierarchical structure. Pro-tenant priority queue provides the flexibility for an application-specific optimization, and difficult round robin I.O. scheduler ensures a fairness across tenants. A DRL algorithm can slow down the I.O. submission of the greedy tenant in terms of the amount of I.O. However, it is not sufficient for the I.O. scheduling because the same amount of I.O. might have significantly different processing times in the SSD. Therefore, Jimbo uses the virtual slot mechanism as an normalized scheduling unit. All tenants have the same number of virtual slots, and each tenant has a at least one. Jimbo manages the total number of virtual slots, and a tenant may have multiple slots if there is a smaller number of tenants to fully utilize the device with only one slot. If a tenant does not have an available virtual slot, it will be deferred until any of each slot completes. The virtual slot is exclusive resource of the tenant and not preemptable. The normalized scheduling unit is required due to the discrepancy of the I.O. completion for different sizes. SSD internally processes all I.O.s in 4KB page granularity, so a large I.O. splits into multiple chunks, but it generates only one completion for each I.O. As a result, we cannot measure the exact amount of I.O. in processing for the large I.O. When we look at how the virtual slot handles this problem in detail, it is similar to a batching in terms of handling multiple requests as one. However, unlike batching, the virtual slot focuses on I.O. completion instead of I.O. submission. As you can see in the figure, batching waits until a certain amount of I.O. arrives and it hurts the I.O. latency. Moreover, batch submission does not solve the completion discrepancy. In, on the other hand, the virtual slot does not block the I.O. submission if the slot has a room for it, and it generates the completion only when all I.O.s has pro have processed, like how the SSD does for large I.O. Although the virtual slot is designed to delay the completion, too much difference in processing time between slots is not desirable for the DRL scheduler because the number of rounds for each tenant can vary significantly. Such a situation happens when the slot has right IOs. To mitigate the issue, Gimbal takes the cost-weighted IO size, which is the actual IO size multiplied by the right cost. A right IO requires more deficit count to be scheduled and occupies more space in the virtual slot with the cost-weighted IO size. The figure shows an example of virtual slot with and without right IO. As you can see, the mixed slot becomes full while the read-only slot is filled only about a half with the same amount of I.O. In combination with the DRL I.O. scheduler and virtual slot optimization, Jimbo enables fair I.O. scheduling in the complex SAT performance characteristics. The write cost due to read and write asymmetry is often assumed as a static parameter. However, we showed that it is a moving target according to the SAT condition. In addition, modern SSD has a write optimization mechanism using the internal buffer. Jimbo employs a write cost estimator and takes advantage of such an optimization. In write cost estimator, Jimbo sets the baseline to the cost at the highly fragmented condition and updates the write cost according to the average write latency. However, it is done conservatively because the virtual slot mechanism compensates the high write cost, and low write cost leads to the burst submission causing high tail latency. As you mentioned, SSD has an internal write buffer and responds immediately when the write I.O. can be done in the buffer. The figure in the slide describes the two cases of write I.O. completion. The chance of the fast completion gets higher when the write I.O. rate is lower than the buffer flush rate. Jimbo leverages this behavior and reduces the write cost when the latency is below the minimum latency threshold. Once the write I.O. rate grows, 
and the slow completion dominates the latency, the write cost returns to the baseline with a multiplicative increment. We built Jimbal using SPDK. It extends the basic NVMe fabric application by adding Jimbal components. There are key parameters affecting Jimbal. First, the minimum and maximum latency ratio determine the underutilized and overloaded states in the delay-based congestion control. We set the minimum threshold to 250 microseconds, which is the maximum latency when there is only one outstanding I.O. in our testbed SSD. For the maximum threshold, we evaluated a range of value and set it to 1.5 milliseconds, which maximizes the device utilization. We also set the virtual slot size to 128 kilobytes, which is the maximum I.O. size of our SSD and the most common. Please check our paper for the detail as well as other para parameters. As we mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, we use Broadcom Stanley as our SmartNIC JBuff platform. For SSD, we installed four Samsung DCT983 960GB NVMe SSD per JBuff. During the evaluation, we used two different conditions. Clean SSD is preconditioned by sequential writes, so performs the best for read and write. Another one is a fragmented SSD. It is preconditioned by multi-hour 4KB random write. Therefore, it shows the worst performance of the SSD. We compare Jimbo with other schemes in the table. For the schemes require a pre-calibration, we use the fragmented SSD. Reflex builds the static performance model with the pre-calibration and applies it to the DRR schedule. Flash FQ uses the start time fair queuing with the performance parameters extracted by pre-calibration. Parda regulates the I.O. submission rate based on the observed latency on the client side. For detail of each scheme, please check our paper. We designed various micro benchmarks with complex mixed workloads. We use FIO2 with a modified SPDK plugin for Jimbo. Due to the time constraint, we will introduce only the result of fairness and overhead evaluation today. Please check more evaluations in our paper. To evaluate a fairness in read and write mixed workload, we defined a new metric, fair utilization. It is a ratio to fair bandwidth share formulated as the equation in the slide. The standalone maximum bandwidth is the peak bandwidth which the workload of the tenant can achieve when it uses the storage exclusively and submit I.O. with no limit. With this metric, we can evaluate not only fairness but also the util device utilization. The values should be the same for all tenants in terms of fairness and close to 1.0 in terms of the utilization. In ideal scenario, the fair utilization is 1.0 for all tenants. First, we run 16 read tenants and 16 write tenants on the fragmented SSD. The I.O. is 4KB random for both read and write in the experiment. In this case, the ratio between the peak read and write bandwidth is 9 to 1. In this evaluation, Jimbal performs the best in both utilization and fairness. With the benefit from the delay-based congestion control, Jimbal shows higher utilization than Reflex, which has a calibrated performance model for the fragmented SSD. Other schemes fail to ensure fairness. We run a similar experiment on the clean SSD as well. In this case, the I.O. size is 120 kilobyte for both read and write, but the write is sequential pattern while the read is random. As the SSD condition and workload changes, read and write bandwidth capability ratio also moves to 2.7 to 1. We don't recalibrate parameters so that all schemes use the same from the previous slide. As shown in the graph, only Jimbo demonstrates the ability to adapt to the change dynamically and ensure fairness. Jimbo should be lightweight to run on SmartNIC. We compare the overhead of Jimbo with the vanilla SPDK. Jimbo adds up to 62.5 overhead in I.O. processing path. When measuring maximum achievable performance by replacing a physical device with a null device, 
Jimbar performs up to 12.4% less than final SPDK. However, it is still sub microsecond and does not degrade the device performance. Jimbar can handle up to 821,000 IOs per second on a single ARM core, and it is higher than the maximum performance of our testbed SSD. For an application evaluation, we run the YCSB benchmark on the RocksDB, which includes two optimizations using the SSD virtual view provided by Jimbo. We added IO rate limiter, which controls outstanding IO, and IO load balancer, which steers read request based on the runtime loading factor of our storage. We set up six servers with the four RocksDB instances per server. Each instance is connected to three SmartNIC JVOPs, and each JVOP has two SSDs preconditioned to fragmented state. The graph shows the query throughput and read tail latency. For the throughput, Jimbo is more effective for write-oriented workloads because it schedules a mixed pattern more efficiently and fairly. On the other hand, Jimbo improves the read tail latency for a read-heavy workload as well because of its flow control mechanism. Overall, Jimbo performs the best for all workloads in both throughput and latency. Today, we discussed the disaggregated storage on SmartNIC and three changes due to the multi-tenancy and the SSD characteristics. They are IO fairness, read-write asymmetry, and non-deterministic device performance. Then we introduced the Jimbo, a store software storage switch. Jimbo implies a black box approach to SSD and employs techniques from networking domain. The three major components are delay-based congestion control, write cost estimator, and the IO scheduler with the virtual slot mechanism. They include an SSD-specific optimization and enable Jimbo to adapt to the changes in workloads and SSD conditions. In the evaluation, we showed that Jimbo improves both fairness and latency, keeping the utilization high. We demonstrated that it is not only for the micro benchmark, but also for the practical application using RocksDB evaluation. We hope that our work will stimulate research that can create a synergy between state-of-the-art storage and networks. Thank you.